Jehova Malak Ola Molamot Jehova Malak Yame Rakes Jehova Gadol Makarian Theos Jehova Yadonai Jehova Elohim Kurios Theos Panta Kreta Kurios Theos Pistos Elda et Jehova Yel Yemuna Jehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Panta Kreta Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurion Jehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Jehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Nimahagion Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Jehova Ishmal Kam Jehova Shema El Nakum Jehova El Nakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Jehova Jesus Christos Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Roshnasa Elohim Elohim Ille Ila E Shalot Malak Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Meshvat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great unique, infallible, and inerrant word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry, of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, as we have been sustained in His grace to realize that we have been called to conform to the image of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rather than being the standards of the Prince, what we call in the Old Testament. So Christ, our Lord of our God, emphasizes for us trust in the Lord God rather than putting your confidence in the Prince. The things pertaining to the Old Testament and the works, what they have done, in comparison to this kind of catasis of this great and unique dispensation of the Church Age, they cannot be even compared because we have been indwelt by Lord God the Holy Ghost. They had the power ministry of endowment, we have the power ministry of enablement. So being cherishing and nourishing in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, it's a bona fide duty of each and every believer to make up his life to be well prepared, to be like a chaste virgin prepared to meet a husband, rather than being a widow and let go. Because all the days of this life, if you're not able to take a proper care, a proper care towards 
your virginity, spiritual virginity towards Christ, then you have to well remember that Yehovah Elohim is going to send his son not to carry or not to take a widow, but he wants to take back his wife who has been a virgin to him. So dear brethren, sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord, my God, which has prepared and kept for us on today's date in every past to the praise of his glory, which we shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn the word. We pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message to the praise of your glory. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. As we were looking yesterday from Deuteronomy chapter 5, that you shall not take in vain the name of the Lord our God. And that's what we were understanding to realize that the fruit of the spirit of light is Dikaya Sune, Aletia and Agate Sune. The truth, the goodness and the righteousness of it. The same thing what Jeremiah chapter 4 emphasizes for us in verse number 2. We have to serve the Lord God in truth, in righteousness and in the standards of his judgment. Because that's the word what has been called for us to swear, to take an oath. And the oath over here refers back that we are going to make a declaration seven times so that we can show we are sincere to that oath. And as we read in Leviticus chapter 20, again to understand in 22, again in verse number 10, that a holy convocation day, it is the seventh day. It is not just before the seventh day, but it is on the seventh day. So here, the same thing, oath, the Lord which we swear. At least you have to read the Bible. You have to be a man who have read the Bible minimum seven times. That's your preparation. And that's what God the Father would call us into preparation without properly prepared. You're not going to go to such doctor or engineer to show back your life on this earth. You're going to ask whether he's a gold medalist or whether he's something where he has been achieved some value of integrity. And depending on that, you're going to go to him for your works or for other things. The same thing over here when we come to deal with Lord God in truth, in righteousness and in judgment. We have to come back in the sense as he states in Leviticus chapter 22 in verse number 10. He emphasizes over here that we shall be upon him or we shall be in the standards of him in the reality of seven days of preparation or seven times of preparation that should be in Leviticus chapter 20 in verse number 7. He said, Sanctify yourselves, therefore be you holy, for I am Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes, and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. And furthermore, he writes over here, to make us to learn that whatsoever God the Father does, he wants minimum, minimum seven times of purification. And that's what today the people are not able to understand in the present Christendom how much pure we are unto the Lord. Because much of the people, they are not understanding how would God the Father make us to be in the standards of purity. Because the greater we spend our time for the purification in the word of the Lord of a God, that's in Leviticus 23 in verse number 8, which says that, you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day he is and holy convocation. You know, until and unless you are going to be seven times well prepared. But the sad part, what we are able to look, you are not even found once virgin to the Lord. By that we meant to say spiritual virgins to Christ. 
and you expect Christ, O oh Lord, our oh God, to come back and take you from the church. Just look what all the things we can name in this prostitution work, defiling yourselves before marriage, because the terminology of these words you know very well. A fornicator, or adulterer, or whatsoever the names you have to defile yourselves before you have been legally wedded and proving your virginity towards Christ or towards your husband as well, physically and spiritually towards Christ. And if you can use over here seven days of a sacrifice, and seven days meant to say seven times, and seven times over here you can refer back to be pure from adulterer, to be pure from fornicator, to be pure from engaging yourselves into whatsoever the names you have, you know, the types of new names for dating or having to get yourself to lose your virginity. So the seven names or seven days or what we are mentioning for you, it could be the way of we can tell the point as such, seven times purify. If you are not in the category of fornication, the first time you are purified. You are not in the category of prostitution, you have been purified. Yo, if you are not in the category like the Samaritan woman, third time you have been purified. So, seven times. Why God the Father wants every believer to read at least seven times the Bible, to write at least seven times the Bible? Because he wants him, the church, for him to be like a chaste virgin as opposed to one husband. And that's what Apostle Paul teaches over here. That he wants to produce the church to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been exposed to one husband. Therefore, he's been worried about the simplicity that could be found in Christ and how these people, they could deceive the church. And what is that? The cunning fables of Satan. And that's what the same thing what he emphasizes over here, particularly in this verse in Second Corinthians chapter 11, when he said, For I am jealous you over you with godly jealousy, for I have exposed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. The same thing what we look over here and we read that much of the present Christendom believers are not being exposed as chaste virgin to Christ, but rather in return, they haven't even made their entire life to at least read once the Bible. But they have read many great things on this earth, every day taking a newspaper, waiting for the newspaper so that they can have a time pass, they're having a cup of tea in the hand. And they think if they don't listen or read newspaper for more than one hour, the things pertaining to the present time or social status or the things pertaining to the activities in the world, they cannot come to know and they want to be sharp in that. And there are men who go not out from the home without reading the paper. But they don't understand it is not the paper, it is the Bible. They have to look in the time when they get into the census by the parents being guided at least seven times. Therefore, orientation to the word of Lord God, orientation to the thinking of Lord God is so much necessary for us. But these people, they haven't been produced as a chaste virgin to the Lord. When we are pertaining these words to the Old Testament in Leviticus 23.9, in Isaiah chapter 43, which we are reading, from verse number 19, particularly you can take these verses as from verse 15, saying that I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus said the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise, they are extinct, they are quenched as stow. Remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of the old. You know, this passage from verse 15 through 18 is emphasizing the way how we deliver the people of the time when there was slavery in Egypt. That's the work of, uh, to the work of Moses, what he delivered them. And then in verse 18 he said, he gives the conclusion now, remember you not the former things, neither you have considered things of old. So the people of the Israelites were absolutely failed. 
because never they try to become a chaste virgin to the Lord. Never they stick to the rules and regulations and the demands of the word of the Lord. So now from verse 19 through 21 is speaking about the church age. So here we look, behold, I will do a new thing. That's what the Kainika says. Every believer being in will by Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Now it shall spring forth and you shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. The way and wilderness and rivers in the deserts is what which we were hopeless. We were the worthless people and that Christ our Lord of God came for us so that the first flock what he had, he said, I have another flock for me as well. And and they will fulfill. He prayed in John chapter 17 that we the church will fulfill the great glory of God the Father. They have kept the word in John 17, 6. So he makes for us a way in the wilderness, a reverse in the deserts. You know, deserts being such a place, if you could experience, he says, that I'm going to give you the rivers, and that's what our lives were. Without knowing Christ, we were like deserts. Without having the way of Christ, we were in the wilderness. And he has made a new thing, a new thing, what giving salvation unto all mankind, that whosoever believeth upon him shall never perish, but have an everlasting life. But the activities of these people, when you look, they have been like the people whose names have been erased out, because they haven't been just virgin to the Lord. Whatsoever the sexual sins, what you may have before marriage, because I don't know some of the terminologies. If you put them, include them in seven categories, every day one category has to be purified. But over here, till you die, seven times, you have to be purified from all of those things. Because Christ, our Lord of God, is coming for a chest virgin of his wife. He's not coming for a widow. He's not coming for a fornicator. He's not coming for an adulterator. He's not coming for like a woman category of Samaritan. Neither is coming like for a woman who is like a traversing donkey under every green tree, spreading her legs. He's coming for a woman who is absolutely a chaste virgin to Christ. Just remember the holiness of Lord God. Forget about the silly, stupid filthiness of your thinking on this earth. Maybe you can think he's coming for such filthy men. No, dear brother, he's coming for the men who are absolutely pure, who are absolutely holy, who are maintaining the things wherewith he made ways in the wilderness. He made the rivers in the deserts to flow through. He's coming for such category of men wherewith they can heed the word of Lord God and love the word of Lord God and protect the commands of the word of Lord God and execute them. He's coming for them. He's not coming for the lawbreakers. He's not coming for the men who have only love with the lips but the hearts being far away. He's not coming for such men who are absolutely corrupted inside and outside, but he's coming for the men who would show forth the fruit of the spirit of flight, who would swear upon Lord God the Father and call upon him in truth and execute his righteousness and his judgment is coming for them. He's not coming for the people who are absolutely still living a life of a lie. So dear brethren, he says, I have made, I will show it and I will make it known for you. That's what Ephesians 2, 7 is all about. He's going to make you to be placed for the ages to follow one upon the other, beginning with the church age, and he's going to make you to be a spectacle to them. And are not able to realize or understand that you're a finished transaction to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. The transaction has been finished. You are a sealed, purchased possession to redeem. He has given Lord God, the Holy Ghost, so that you're no longer going to be like a woman who has been a widow or a fornicator or a prostitute or an adulterer. You were before believing in Christ, but after believing in Christ, you have been made a new creation in the Lord. You have been now called to be a kind of ketesis. Since being a kind of ketesis in the Lord God, you have to maintain your chastity. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ planted the woman. He said, sin no more. If they would go to sin, do you think they would have had that great life of, uh, of the standards of the thing saying that they could be saved back? The prostitute, when we find the Mary Magdalena, when she was being healed, when she was being saved, she, did you think she went back again for the same business? 
She was the first woman to come. That's the same picture of this world in Christ. We are like that Mary Magdalene, a prostitute, who have been giving on our life for prostitution. But now when we look, the first woman, she's coming in search. Earlier she was a prostitution. That's what we find in the parable of Luke. When she comes, she doesn't stop to clean the legs of my Lord with her tears. And that's what we look. And the people think that she is a prostitute and how she could come and how he could be a company with such men if ever he has been from God. <laughs> he said, God, the physician has been needed by the one who are sick. And that woman, she is in search now about my Christ in Mark chapter 16, you look. The first woman, she comes. That's how we the people should be transformed now from such prostitution way of life. Our prostitution way of life is nothing but not your physical prostitution, but your mental prostitution, your spiritual prostitution. The Colossians 4, 6 emphasizes, whenever you open up your mouth being seasoned with salt, you have to give a fit answer, an answer that which is suitable to Lord God. An answer that is going to edify others. But you're having a new spiritual prostitution to the core. So you cannot open up your mouth in truth. But this woman transformed. In such a way she says, If ever gardener you have seen, my Lord, curios. She says, I will take him. Such is the way what we have to transform now. The same thing what we read in Ezekiel chapter 46. You shall not return back from the same way. Verse number 9. You shall go over against it. That's a new creation in Lord God. That's the chest version to be produced, preserved and protected for Lord God. Not once again the same old way of life. Seven days. The seventh day will be a holy convocation, but you people haven't read at least once your Bible. At least haven't you taken up your time to carry your cross every day? In your entire lifetime, have you written at least once? It's just reading in the past. Present, we are scribes. We have to write the Bible. Have you at least written once the Bible? If you are seriously writing, minimum at least five to ten words a day, Almost all to cover 33,000 verses from the Bible. It would take less than, not less than 10 years. If you would write 10 verses a day with understanding. Then just imagine, 7 times into 10, 70 years. The things then of the 70 years will be like a holy convocation unto the Lord. If you are writing that, reading you can make it fast. But you haven't made up your time to read the Bible. How would you write the Bible? Seven times? At least one time? Then how could you be as a chest words into the Lord God? We can find you in, in, in any one of the lusts of this world. Why are you not becoming holy as the Bible demands you to be holy? Do you think tomorrow your eternity is in the viewpoint of this earth so that you can cherish and nourish and drink and make yourselves like the time of Noah? No, dear brethren, the times have changed. We have been told to look into the account of Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher and there's so much of dull in understanding as he said in Matthew 15, 16, even for the disciples. You are so dull of understanding. Do you not comprehend this parable? Eating and drinking parable. It is not that ghost which inside defileth, which comes outside. But when we look upon the things which come outside, you may be pure virgin from physically, but mentally you are corrupted. Spiritually you are corrupted. Your standards are not in accord with the word of God. So he says you are corrupted and he's reprimanding the disciples. Can't you understand the simple things? 
The same thing with the church tomorrow, which is going to be presented to God the Father, spotless, blameless, and not having any reproach on that. Colossians 1.18, we read that. For that cause, he emphasizes, have your foundation firm. If ever you have been rooted and grounded, systematically being taught, if you have been not movable, you have been all the time firm, then in the doctrine, the word doctrine over their faith or whatever you call to be pistis, it is not just you stand by the promises of God, but you're going to advance to look upon the mysterious doctrine of the church age that is like the salt which has kept its savor we read that in Luke chapter 13 if the salt has lost its savor what best we can do the word savor is nothing but a morion and when you look upon the word over there it emphasizes that you are not worthy to get into the mystery doctrine of the church age though in this church age it is a unique privilege for every believer to learn great deep things of the mind of Christ and you'll not be well qualified to be for the one third part of the fallen angels which went away with Lucifer and you have to replace them and then how well qualified you have to be by learning the extreme things the great things the deep things of the word of Lord God as we use the word meek being wrongly translated in the English of Matthew 5 but rather the word meek meant to say a warrior who's been well prepared and at any time who's been ready to war the wage of Lord God's war and is going to wage such a kind of a great high war because he knows very well as Jeremiah 48 10 emphasizes cursed is the one who doeth the work of Lord God negligently so he's going for the Lord's battle in the day of the battle of the Lord's hand is going to stand the meek ones are the one who have been well prepared but we find you people are not well prepared you're not well prepared to put to death the deeds of your flesh, Colossians 3, 5. Necrosate, not mortify, that's wrong translation in the English. The Greek is very strong, necrosate, necrosis, the word followed by sate, meant to say put to death. No compromise. You have to live your life in the viewpoint of eternity, not the viewpoint of the life of this earth, where with what you can eat, what you can drink, and you go on to defile yourselves for the things as the way these people go on to look upon what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, at the cost of rejecting first to seek the righteousness and his kingdom. You know how contrary you are able to walk according to the demands of the word of Lord God. The Bible says in Matthew 6.33, First seek you his righteousness and his kingdom. Then all these things, the details of life will be added unto you. But you come to take the name of my Lord God in vain standards to beg for the details of life and not to beg for the heavenly standards of his glory. You know, Lord God reigneth forever and forever. There is not a day that he cannot reign. Every day he reigneth. As long as Lord God the Father reigneth forever and forever, so long the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father. The earth is we being made in the form of the dust. You come out from the mother's womb, it's as good as being buried in the mother's womb. From the day you step out, till the day you're born again in Christ by the guidelines of your parents leading you to Christ, from the day you're born again till the day again you have been once again in the womb of the earth or the rapture, whichever could occur first. You have to represent the great and true holiness of God the Father forever. And that's how you have been designed. That means when you have been there in the mother's womb, it's as good as you have been buried. And when you come out, when you come out to look upon the new life, the way how you are going to execute your new life, the way how you are going to be born again in Christ, the way how you have been in the Spirit. No, you cannot be like John the Baptist or Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has been born in the Spirit. But he will be born again in the Spirit. From there on, the way how you are going to live your life till you die, I'd go by it once again on this earth. That's as good as again in the womb of the earth. The days how you have lived, whether you were like a chest virgin, whether you were like a honest one like Job, whether you were like King David falling with all of your heart, like the standards of the word of God, doing the will of God the Father, whether you were like 
Daniel or whether you were like Job, whether you were like Moses, whether you were like Isaiah, whether you were like Jeremiah, whether you were like the great men in the past, great men in the present of New Testament apostles or the things pertaining to be what examples we have in the Bible. If you're not marking them well, if you're not walking like them, if you're not becoming the truth to these people and shining forth as Lord, 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 Lord witnesses as light luminaries in the midst of this power's crooked people, then dear brethren, after you have been once again bought out from the womb of this earth either you will be taken back to the resurrection of life or you'll be taken back to the resurrection of death and when if you are in the resurrection of life the way how you were in spite of having the old sin nature in you constantly condemning you constantly making you to go on to fulfill the lusts of your flesh constantly making you to avoid the word of Lord God constantly making you not to carry the cross of the word of Lord God the way have you neglected the same thing will be reflected back for you at the time of resurrection but at the same time you put to death all the things pertaining to anything that could be against the word of Lord God and you went to give priority for the word of Lord God you love the word of Lord God more than necessary food you have steamed the word of Lord God than anything else on this earth you went along to dig and honor the word of Lord God and preach and teach and fulfill the great and unique mandates of the of the word of Lord God confirming to the image of Lord God the way what you did the same thing Thing will be reflected back to you in your resurrection life. Therefore, the classification of the believers. You know, dear brethren, what you saw that you will rape. The people of Israelites, they failed. When he called them, when he gave them the law, when he did the things pertaining to the word of Lord God, they failed. That's what we record over here in Isaiah 43. They never stood back to the glory of Lord God. Therefore, he said in verse 18, Remember you not the former things, neither consider things of the old. Behold, now I'm going to make a new thing. That's we the warning for the church age, that they will spring forth and you shall know it. That meant to say what? We shall be in the light luminaries of the word of Lord God, being in by Lord God, the Holy Ghost, so that the people can realize and understand what a great privilege and a power that has been given for us as kinecatesis in the church. But you know what? You're turning out to be more worse than the Old Testament saints. At least there we can find the category of the people of Zodokites, the category of the people who stood loyal unto the Lord God, like the men of Elijah, like the category of 7,000 men, which he said, they haven't dealt a bow down to me. Again, even in the millennium when they come, before the millennium when they come in the tribulation of 78th week, one like 44,000 Jews plus followed by the two witnesses, they are standing loyal to Lord God. But when you find over here in the church age, you're not able to find yourselves preparing as a chaste virgin to Christ being corrupted. You're first being buried in the mother's womb. You come up into life. The day when you believe in Christ till the day you die and again be buried in this earth womb. You have to prove your chastity. The way what you saw. The way what you try to prove. The way the things which do not match to the word of Lord God and whatsoever you have reflected, the same thing will be risen up, as you said, in Daniel chapter 12, as well as in John chapter 5. Some to the resurrection of life and some to the condemnation. Therefore, dear brethren, it's a high time for us. This lifetime, what has been given for us, it's a time to prepare ourselves for eternity. It is not a time to enjoy the details of life. It is not a time for us to say, if we don't enjoy now in the flesh, then when you may think. But dear brother, it is not a time for enjoyment. It is a time for preparation for Lord's glory and for Lord's eternity because Lord God reigneth forever and forever. And as long he reigneth till the time, the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father. As you said, as I truly live, I will make the earth to be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father in Numbers 14.21 so it is the primary focus and duty of every true believer in Christ to make your body to shine forth through the glory of Lord God the Father forever because every day, every moment, every second of your life it is Yehovah Elohim who shall reign forever and forever therefore we have been said several times better to trust in the Lord God better to put your confidence in Lord God rather than trusting man, rather than putting confidence in man or in the princes or the thing as Jeremiah 17 teaches cursed is the man who goes to help or to 
to get help from the Egypt rather than trusting in the living Lord of a God. So we know very well it is for us to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And as we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is what we have been said, dear brethren, it is he who shall reign. And when he is reigning forever and forever, dear brethren, then for sure every moment we have to be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father in this flesh called to be the earth till we could get back to the resurrection life. But we are proving more worst than the people of the Israelites. We are really proving ourselves worthless. But Christ our Lord of our God hasn't called for yourselves to be worthless. If ever there is anything that you are trying to prove on this earth, apart from making yourself fit for the resurrection body, your body is not being used for that work. You know why? Now you have been given this flesh to prove against all odd of circumstances which is going through in your life. All pressures, all desires, all lusts. So that now being put to death, your desires, your lusts, your things pertaining to suffer for the righteousness of God. Only in this life what has been given for you in this life is to get well qualified for your resurrection body. Just imagine from the day you have been born again till the day you die how you have lived for Lord if it is not for a chaste virgin kind of a life. Dear brethren, Christ will not come for any other category apart from the chaste virgin to the Lord. The ministers have lost the godly jealousy towards the church to produce them to be fit. And they go on to emphasize the miracles, the healings and the tongues, though they don't happen today. And they want to proclaim their life to teach to you all the days of this life, signs and miracles and wonders and tongues. The temporary spiritual gifts being seized off, we have now the permanence of the spiritual gifts, which is called to be the pastor, teacher, evangelical work, administration work, even the prophets and evangelists, their work has been erased out. Oh, prophets and the apostles, not evangelists. We have now only one rule, the mind of Christ. We have only one thing to interpret the word in the exegetical standards of the word of Lord God, John 1.18. We have only one thing to use the grace of Lord God to prepare ourselves for the future glory of the standards of the future life because now is the time for you what you sow that you will reap. So here in this passage from 43 of Isaiah in verse 15 through 18 he emphasizes that the people they forgot and 19 through 21 he emphasizes that we because the church age believers he has made a way in the wilderness he has made the standards of rivers in the deserts and he said the beast kind of the field shall honor me the dragons the owls they shall honor me because I give waters that is what the privilege of Lord God the Holy Ghost ministry in our lives the water first salvation, the water second, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the water third. What we find over here for us is absolutely simple, called to be the word of Lord God so that we can cleanse ourselves through the remata declaration of the word of Lord God and be well prepared to meet our Lord. The three things what we find over here for waters, he said, because I have given them waters in the wilderness, I have given them rivers in the deserts so that to give drink to my people, my chosen ones. Many are called, few are chosen, dear brethren. <laughs> be careful about this world chosen, because the chosen ones called to be Bakke heir, elect of God, are the people who have made their body with a wall of fortification, nothing but to have the thinking of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They have prepared their body with such sort of a wall of fortification that they're going to use Nothing but the word of Lord God to go through that word. And you know, you people are not able to understand the importance of this word of Lord God. In Proverbs chapter 3, the word chosen when he has been using for the category of this man who could be. In chapter 3, beginning with verse number 11, when he said, In verse, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. And he says, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he hath delight. And now he goes on says, saying that, If you have been chosen, then what you will elect? You will be elected to learn the word of Lord God, the wisdom of Lord God. So he says in verse 13, 
Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof it is better than the fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that you can desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in the left hand riches and honor. Our ways are ways of pleasantness, and all the paths of peace. She is a tree of life to them that they hold, lay hold upon her, and happy is the one that retaineth her. The Lord Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding he hath established the heavens, by his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. We read that. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. You know who are the people? The chosen ones, Bakair, who go on to use their body to build a wall of fortification to renovate according to the standards of the thinking of the word of Lord God, and nothing else than that. So, dear brethren, he says, My son, let, let not them depart from my, thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and desertion. You know why? So shall they be life unto thy soul. And then, grace unto thy neck. Or neck meant to say the throat. You want to swallow, or eat, or drink, and anything could reflect in your body. Rather than becoming like a museum piece, not to have fresher things in your body, fresher joy in your body. You know what happens first? Your throat is not shown that grace to swallow, to drink. When you stop that, when you stop that to swallow or to drink or to eat after munching the food, that swallowing process, if that grace is not shown, your body cannot digest that food. We cannot inject anything outside from the body directly to the stomach. It has to go through the process of this throat. So here, what is going to show? He said he's going to show grace to thy throat. The word grace meant to say, call to be a shen, which we don't deserve. But yet God the Father has given that favor, that grace. Because you are prepared, your wall of fortification to be in the vigor and valor of the word of Lord God. So he's going to show you that grace. And that grace will, will be shown for your throat. And what is the truth? You have been established to talk nothing but the viewpoint of the word of Lord God, wherewith you chew the food and you swallow. You gulp the water and you swallow. If the grace has not been shown while swallowing, then you shall not understand that your life is been not in the realm of your thinking. Because, dear brethren, the life unto thy soul is what the grace shown to thy throat. So man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. First your thought process, and then your physical food, what you take. Because man has been depending on that food. But Lord God teaches to us in the arena of the super grace believers. For them the meat is to do the will of God the Father. John 4.34 for Elijah, one day of meal, walking 40 days to meet the Lord God over there to know the lesson of Zechariah 4, 6b, not in valor nor in vigor, but by the Spirit of Lord God. The same thing what Moses received 40 days and 40 nights, being present in his presence twice. Because he realized it is not the food. The super grace category of the believers realize it is not the physical food. It is the spiritual food where they have to show, but they, where they have to have by having that grace before God the Father for every day. But these people, they have changed. And now, dear brethren, he said, when you have been really walking in the grace of God, he said, then you shall walk in thy way safely, and thy foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you shall not be afraid. And when you shall lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not be afraid of the sudden fear, neither of the dissolution of the wicked when it cometh, because for the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. What does he want you on to this earth? Put your confidence in the Lord God. Withhold not good from them to whom it is dear, when it is in his power of thine hand to do it. You know why? When you have learnt and understood the grace of Lord God the Father, do not keep it for yourself, but give to all. That's the reason he says, join us disciples growing up into grammatias, in return going and making disciples of all the nations, which is in our power to do it when we grow up first faithful in the word of Lord God. 
So dear brethren, the things wherewith you will be afraid, sudden fear may come, dissolution may come of the wicked. He says, fear not, because Lord thy God is thy confidence. Because you have brain like a scribe, no matter what may be the pressures in your life, you're going to go on to make disciples. And when you're going to do his work as scribes, and no matter what may be the pressure in your life, and you're going to make disciples, you know, that's what he says. That's absolute confidence. That's what he called to be Kessel. The word Kessel meant to say to be foolishly confident in something. <laughs> in, the, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 16 in verse 16 through 18 when he said this sign shall follow and the morons may ask do we have foolish confidence in that? To drink a poison venom or this or that? They did it because those things were given the power to do before the completion of the canon of scripture to establish them that they've been sent by Lord God. They did it in the past. As the same thing we look in the life of Apostle Paul, when he could, even his apron could fall or the shadow of Peter could fall, they were healed. But in the case of Apopadipus, we look, he prayed. He could not heal. When once the authority has been established, there is no need for us to show the signs of wonders and tempt the Lord God, as in Luke chapter 4 in verse number 9, as well we look. You just fly out and God will provide his angels to protect you. So no need to tempt. No need to drink and prove. Because now the drinking is not the drinking of a cup. The drinking of the wrath of Lord God upon these nations as Jeremiah did. Which we read yesterday. Making the nations to be filled with the fury. And it will be an astonishment. It will be a horror. It will be a great cursing. Why? Because they will not change to become the word of Lord God. That's why. Now it's the drinking of the cup of salvation for all the benefits what he has done. If you fail to drink the cup of salvation for all the benefits what Lord God the Father has done, you're going to drink your own standards, the wrath of Lord God abiding upon you. So having such foolish confidence, you know the apostles and the prophets, they have done their work, but now what we have, the work is to break up the mental blocks. Not that you need a sign or a wonder or a miracle to be believed. That's what he said in John chapter 4 in verse number 48 and 49. Till I could do a sign or a miracle, you're not going to believe me. And how dull you are not to believe in the Lord. Therefore he says, this I speak for your shame. You don't have knowledge of the word of Lord God. That's what Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians. That you have to be presented like a chaste virgin unto the Lord God. Six days, seven days of holy convocation and then seven day the holy convocation unto the Lord. But you know how you are, as we read in Genesis chapter 28, in verse 8 and 9, they say, let all the sheep gather together. But these people know very well, it's a high time. The sheep cannot be gathered, that's what is access to them. How much of the sheep are there? Just open up the well and pour them the water. But you know the solid reasons what these people they give today as well, not to be as a chest version unto the Lord God. As we find these words in Genesis chapter 29, being recorded by Lord God the Holy Ghost in verse number 7 and 8, He said unto them, It's a high day, neither it is the time that the cattle should be gathered. Water you the sheep and go and feed. And they said, We cannot, we are called, we cannot unto all the flock, until all the flock be gathered together, then till they roll the stone from the well, they're waiting someone to roll the stone. Then we water the sheep. You know the lame excuses. The five foolish virgins they were, these are the lame excuses what you will find. To fill up the lamps with the oil, be prepared every day. You want someone to come and gather the flock. You want someone to roll the stone from the well's mouth. And then you think when the well's mouth is open, then you're going to pour the water. No, dear brethren. You're really not able to understand the command given to us to water the sheep, to go and feed them. And that's what you are, having an absolute foolish confidence. People may think it's not necessary, but the point is very clear, to have to be with such sort of a great foolish confidence. 
that we trust him. We look upon the standards of his life and we go on to be. But you know what, dear brethren? They are not having such confidence. The reason for the word kesel, what we have over here, because he said, when you are going to be in that standards of such great confidence, you shall not be afraid. Because he shall provide you the best. Because your confidence is Lord God. He is our confidence. And when Lord God is our confidence, having to put everything in verse number 26 of Proverbs 3, confidence, having to have such kind of a foolish thing, you know, he says, he shall keep thy food from being taken. The same thing what in Luke chapter 4 in verse 9 and 10, when Satan tempts the Lord. And over here it meant to say, not to go back and prove again the things. Because we have confidence in the Lord. Now the thing what we need to prove is what, you know, dear brethren, after the completion of the can of scripture, show your disciples growing up into grammar tears and in return your disciples are making, your, your, your grammar tears have in return making, making disciples on this earth. This is what the confidence you have now. But we look more worse than the people of the Israelites who failed. That's what we find over here in Isaiah chapter 43, which he says in verse number 19, that this will be the people whom I have trusted. This will be the category of the people wherewith of a new thing, a spring forth will come upon them, and I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. The beast of the field, the category of us, they shall honor me. The dragons, even we include in that category. Owls, we include in that category. But yet God the Father gives water in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts to give the people to my drink, called to be the chosen one, called to be the elected one, wherewith a proper examination to determine the choicest. That's what you have been constantly taken to prove that you have been the chosen one. Therefore, your confidence will be in the law. Kessel, not to tempt him, but rather to obey his word and to fulfill the demands of the word of Lord God by sowing the seed. And it's the work of God the Father to make the seed to flourish and to grow up and to become the things pertaining to his fruit to yield thirty, sixty, or hundredfold. But our work is to now to sow the seed, the great many revolutionary things which have been there for us in the Bible to dig and teach and to tell to these people. Because without proper aesthetical standards of pictographical representations of the word, many of the things haven't been exposed. Many of the things in the Bible. Therefore, you're just living your life to be like any category of the woman apart from a chaste virgin exposed to one husband in Christ. So you may think the reason to lose your virginity may be this or that. You know, you can find many stories. And you may be thinking about this and about that. So you have lost your virginity, dear brother, and whatsoever may be the reason. You know, when you go for a wedding lock, particularly it is not like the Western. In India, we have a culture. They look seven generations of that girl or a boy. How about their families, what they are. And if anyone could give a negative report upon that girl or a boy, no matter however may be the things, they cancel out the marriage. It's not just like in other countries, in the foreign countries where you go on to have a date and then you have your relationship living before the marriage and defile yourselves, though the Bible says, and because you are the people who have to be the client nation to God, particularly USA, in Hebrews chapter 13, which says, a marriage bed shall not be defiled. That meant to say what? You shall not have sex outside the marriage. But the people defile. So here we look. In my country, India, being proud of this culture of my country, they yet their people are following the things pertaining to my culture in my country because even in my country, people are following the Western influence to go on to fulfill the lusts of the flesh before marriage. But we don't come from there. We find a strict rule. We look seven generations behind what the kid was or what the parents of the kid were. Seven generations we look 
And if anyone would come back when they're reading the marriage bans, if anyone would lift up their hand, there should be a reason that they shall not be married. And if it includes with proper evidence, the marriage has been cancelled as well. So the point, what I want to say, while on this earth you are still alive, you want to get married to a, to a chaste virgin who hasn't been influenced by anyone, emotionalized by anyone, because many movies in India, they will direct you. The girl is loving someone, her boyfriend, but their parents have fixed a marriage to someone. So she's having a pain in her heart and she goes on to have some uh, romantic songs and the songs will be in the great hit list and the people will love to be in the category of the hit list because even the same thing happened with their life. So the girl got married to someone and he's going to die. That's emotional influence that is occupying her soul, not the physical body. So you look even that. And people are so foolish to look any cow sort of movies. Many, many great movies. The guy marries to someone and she's been dead in an accident and the woman, she's been in love with someone. And that guy says because of her parents' pressure, he left the country a lie to this girl and he got married to someone and he sends a message saying that he has been dead in some accident of a plane so that now this girl is waiting for him or this guy is waiting for someone and now this boy and girl, they get married. And after their marriage, they come to know that he loved someone, she loved someone and now the boy wants to make this woman to search that guy and he wants to make her to go through that family. You know, the stories, there are many in India, you can find it out. So that's the emotional occupation or the soul being occupied first. It's not the physical flesh, first the soul. So here, while you're getting married, you look at all these conditions, whether she is virgin, and in some poor countries where, in, in my country, India, where some of the people have not been literate. You know, they want a seal of virginity. And you can find that videos as well. They will say, we put a white blanket. And if there is a red colored drop which comes out when the vaginal seal has been cut off, then they will believe that she is a virgin. <laughs> you know, man being so cunning in this world, in so many details of life, do you not think when you are going to be in the chaste virgin category of Christ, how much we have to be well prepared? The relationship of your life, for, exa for example, among unbelievers, Ecclesiastes 9.9, 9, you're going to find the category of the people where with these unbelievers have only in their entire lifetime the only pleasure is with the wife of the youth whom he has get loved or married. And apart from that, he's going to have the entrance into burning hell, rejecting Christ. So the memories of him would be with his wife. Or the wife with the husband, that's it. So that's the only pleasure you count as an unbeliever. And for those things you have your marriage rituals. In India we have that. For seven days of marriage or ten days of marriage. They may not take dowry or not give dowry, but the expense of the marriage will be too high. Because they want that to stand forever. <laughs> Dear brethren. The things today they are and tomorrow they vanish because they can't stand against the nature. They cannot understand the nature or what we call the natural things. What you find over here, any catastrophical changes in the nature, they're not even aware what is going to happen. And all the people who love to bless for your marriage, saying that have a good life and in the middle of the journey of your marriage, the health of your wife will get deteriorated and you get imbalanced with that. You know, all these things. Thus, for the sake of your marriage on this earth, you're going to count her to be, for a few days or for some days at least, you want her to be virgin. You want her soul to be virgin. You want her emotional patterns to be virgin. She wants to be all the time inculcated to you. Just for the sake of little days. Even thousand days in the presence, thousand days in the presence of Lord God the Father is just like one day. And our lifespan, 120 years to the maximum. Like Moses to live vigor and valor life. And that how many days your wife can survive. 
So you know only for the sake of few days you want on this earth to be a chaste virgin for you. Then how much more it would be for heaven? Where you are going to be with him forever. Where with you are going to be checked every breath. Whether you are having that blanket and a red spot on this earth. The same manner whether you are going to have a white cloth without spot on that. Amomas. Inward and outward spotless. Agnaketas. Giving you to be irreproachable so that none should blame you. How much more it should be. And that's the word what he says. The people of the Israelites, they failed to prove my chastity, to prove my virginity. They failed. And what a great pain it would be to Lord God the Father. He has chosen them to be like the categories of the princes. That's what we find over here in Lamentations chapter 5. In verse number 12, he said, Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of elders were not handed, honored. The word princes over here is called to be Tsar. Tsar meant to say chief, the captain, the official. The Tsar is the one who has overcome the pressures of life by thinking according to the standards of the word of Lord God. So it is the one who is going to rule with the proper direction, turning the people according to the word of God. Even they, what they became, he says in the book of Lamentations, were hanged up. That meant to say what? They were being twisted, caught, suspending for something because they did not have in them the real authority of discipleship. That's the pictographical representation followed by the sign of a mark of authority and a lamad stick. And then the elders, you know, that's why we find Presbyterians in the uh, in the Episcopos epistles, what Peter writes to them. The elders, the kinmen, who they are, they have been given the authority to dig and take by digging and taking every day the word of Lord God from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to show forth and shine forth as the Lord's authority. These elders, what they did, he said, the faces of the elders were not honored. Why? Because they did not get every perception of their thought in the viewpoint of the word of Lord God. Even after you get married, you would do, wouldn't you shout upon your wife saying that what your elders thought, what your parents thought. The parents are not honored in that case. When you have been taking, the wife is not working according to the things pertaining to the desires of you. The same thing tomorrow will be with the church. Elders will be reprimanded by not training the children the way that they should go. Till the time of Joshua and the, and the people outlived Joshua, they knew Yehovah Elohim. They promised, "We shall serve the Lord God." Though he said, "You cannot serve Lord God because a holy, because he's a holy, jealous Lord God." And then when, it, when the next generation comes up, he says that they knew not Yehovah Elohim. So, dear brethren. And then he said, for the same word, princes, we find over here in Joshua chapter 22, beginning with verse number 29. Here again, here we have a category of the princes. They made a promise that they shall build up a they shall build up the standards pertaining to be the tabernacle. And we look in verse 30 and when Phineas, the priest and the princes, here the word princes is another word. It is called to be as Nase. And the word Nase meant to say over here that they have a vigor and valor to overcome any pressure. But there the first word what we read for Lamentations 5.12, they were Sars. But here it is Nasi. The word Sars and Nasi in the English it is the same, princes. But in the Hebrew there is a lot of difference. For the word Sar meant to say the one who is a chieftain, the one who is an official, the one who rules. No matter what may be the pressures, he's going to renovate the standards of the thinking according to the word of God. They were not being given proper care. They were hanged. Because they were not having proper authority in them to become a disciple to the word of God. And when he come over here, the prince, that meant to say, these are not like the Sars, but these are Nazis. These are the people where with you would come for refuge. But these people, they cannot be for refuge. Because they haven't been yet 
overcome the pressures of life. That meant to say, Sar ripened up fruit ready to eat, and this Nase, these are the fruit, but not ready to eat. These are still raw. Now we have the third word for us in the book of Psalms, chapter 118, in verse number 9. Here also, for the word, what we look, it says in verse number 9, Put not your confidence in the princes. Now, the word over here for the princes is called to be Nadeib. It is not Sar. It is not again the word Nase. But now it is the word called to be Nadeib. And what is the meaning of Nadeib? That meant to say the people who are generous or willing who are willing to offer something with a willing heart as a sign of honor. And the people may say, we will be with you, don't worry. We are there to associate with you. And you know what does it mean to say? These people, they are also having the vigor and valor to get every thought into perception of Christ in their body, but yet they haven't been prepared to be in the Lord. Dear brethren, the chosen ones of Lord God, the elected ones of Lord God. They have an absolute confidence in the will of Lord God. They will not be the categories of this people. But though the Old Testament saints were called to be either Sars, they have to reach the target of Sars by becoming either Nasi or Nadib. But we look, the categories of this people, they are giving false promises, false things, but they haven't made up their life completely to be fixed upon Christ. So he says, my chosen ones, the New Testament believers, he says in verse 21 of Isaiah 43, this people I have formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise, they shall go on to be like the scribes, so fair, no matter what may be the pressure in life, they open up their mouth to talk the viewpoint of the word of Lord God, such is the great so fair, such is the one who will be like a scribe. But you know what does he say in verse 22? Coming back to the people of Israelites. You know what does he say? You have not called upon me, O Jacob. But you have been weary of me, O Israel. You know what the word weary meant to say? The people thought, Yaga. <laughs> it is a toilsome to come and carry the cross every day. Follow my Christ. Because they have a lot many luxuries in this life to enjoy, which is going to lead them to the faster rate of death. Why the people in the past, they lived like 120 years, 110 years, Joshua, 120 years, Moses, 85 years though he was Caleb. We look, he says he has vigor in him of 40. Why? Because they lived for Christ. They gave their lives to Christ. But now you think it's a toilsome. It's a labor. Every day carrying your cross, every day joining as disciples, growing up into grammatias, though you may write minimum five to ten words a day, it would take to complete the Bible ten years, like that you should write seven times the Bible, seventy years of your life has been gone, then you don't even worry on that. How much time would it take every day, five to ten, ten verses to write, minimum half an hour? But you should give to Lord God two hours, forty minutes. You are still due to Lord God two hours, ten minutes in that day. Then imagine how much of your time you have been speeding up to die, sin unto death. And people would calculate in a very, very intelligent, wise way. You know, they say, eight hours you are going to sleep. So half of the life, quarter of the life. Eight hours you are going to work. So second quarter of the life. The third quarter of the life, eight hours, what are you going to spend? Spend with good thoughts. Spend with good people. Spend for this. Spend for that. You know, you are morons. Idiots to the core. Every day, 2 hours, 40 minutes, spend your time in the viewpoint of eternity, in the viewpoint of the enlightenment of the living, where the people would want you to live an eternal life. After you die, what? Is there any other God on this earth who could come back from his life? As you said, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it back. Is there any other Lord God who could come back in a way as Christ our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did it, proved it? People don't believe his incarnation. They don't work his, they don't work their mind to look upon crucifixion, far less they could believe the resurrection of my Lord. 
But we Christians believe incarnation. We go on to look his crucifixion. We understand it and we now love to live a life of resurrected in the Lord. But your surrounding men, they're not been known on that. They don't even have a smell of that. You know what you smell? You smell like human excreta to them. You smell not like a chaste virgin to them. You smell like a prostitute to them. And yet you think you can do great things. No, dear brethren, you're just making your life as a kid. Because you think it's a very, it's a burdensome, it's a toilsome. That's what he says about the people of Israelites. He reflects back the same thing to us. He said every day, renovate the standards of your thinking. Every day, carry your cross, follow my crush. Every day, come back to learn the word of Lord God. But you say, no, Lord, we cannot do that. We will not come for that. We are enjoying the details of life. Let us enjoy. Let us feed enough our death in this life by looking upon for the bread of the butter. <laughs> in the Psalms of David, we look. He provides them the food. He provides them the clothing. He provides them the shelter. He provides them the health renewed greater than the vigor and valor like an eagle in the Lord. And the reason why? Because they will not grow weary for the Lord's word. They are ready to die for Lord. When we look in that first Kings, in chapter number 14, the gracious grace of Lord God the Father what is established upon those people. When Jeroboam was ruling over there, we find beginning with verse number 27. We find about Rehoboam over here, but we want Jeroboam because he said, for all the things what he has done. It has to be in chapter number 15, I think. And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. And Baasha, the son of Abijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him. And Baasha smote him at Gibbonath, which belonged to the Philistines. Of for Nadab and all the Israel laid siege to Gibbon. Because here we have a word which is important. Which says that the things pertaining to the works of which he has done. God the Father says he has shown compassion that he doesn't want the people of Israelites to be seized. So dear brethren, with the same words over here we run, saying that the thing pertaining to, no matter however, you might be going on to fall from the grace of God at God the Father gives you. That's what we find in Second Kings in chapter 14. In verse number 23, In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned forty and one years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was a gath hipper. For the Lord saw the affliction of Israel, that it was very bitter. For there was not any shut up, nor any left, nor any helper for Israel. And the Lord said, Not that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. Every time, you know what is it? It is the greatness of the forgiving father or the prodigal son. You may think there is a great joy of repentance when a sinner has been changed indeed. 
But to show that grace first, that's what we find over here in these words of Second Kings chapter 14. The Lord said not that he would blot out the name of Israel. He did not even spare the people of Israel, as he said in Amos. Apart from Israel, I know not any people on the face of the earth. The same thing with us. You have been the chosen ones of Lord God. You have been called to be the great ones of Lord God. But you are founding him to be very. You are counting it to take the burden of Lord God to be in the standards of thinking. Why we should carry the cross every day. It's a burdensome. It's a toilsome. It's not effective for us. You don't think you are just carrying a little cross like Christ our Lord did. But a daily prescription prescribed path of data of doctrine which you need to take. As a way to get your data, for example, in your recharge of these smartphones, one GB of data, which will be again given back at the time when you recharge, particularly 24 hours and that expires. Again, you get for the next 24 hours, you want next one more GB of data, greater than that one GB or 1.5 or 2 or 3 or whatever the package you might have put, or unlimited GB. Greater than that is what you have to carry your cross. That's meant to say you are prescribed with a portion, the word of Lord God, what you have been given by the will of Lord God the Father to take on that particular day. But he counted to be very. <laughs> you know what the word of Lord God says? Because he shall not blot out the name of Israel from under the heaven, but he saved them. You know the word saved. Yasha, he showed them that which is called to go on to renovate the standards of your thinking. Once again, renovate the standards of your thinking according to the viewpoint of the word of Lord God. That's the word called to be Yasha because he has the delight and he goes to give you to be saved from the predator when it comes to attack. And you know today who is a predator? Satan like a roaring lion whom to devour. <laughs> That's your predator. And you're not happy to be saved. But Christ our Lord our God gives you one more day to be saved. You know how gracious, compassionate my Lord God is. Because you know he's showing that favor for the wife of my Christ to be like a chaste virgin unto the Lord God. The past he called them to be in the rank of a sar of prince, nasi of a rank of a prince, or in the nadi'ib rank of a prince. But now it is not the sar or a nasi or a nadi'ib. It is now confirming to the image of my Christ. If ever you walk, you ought to be like the thinking of Christ. If ever you think, it has to be the renovated mind of Christ. If ever you be in the fellowship of walking, it has to be all the time in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. It is not the sar or nasi or nadi'ib ranks of princes, but now it is something great to be confirming to the image of Christ. And you may think you may have reasons to give. Oh dear brethren, you have to be produced like a chaste virgin unto Christ. Minimum, seven times. He said, I will praise unto thee, O Lord, in Psalms 119. If he would keep a gap one and a half an hour each, he should be reminded of his praise. But if people don't even try to give that, Though the word says in Psalms 1, you might be very well familiarized to memorize them among your VBS classes, you know, vacational Bible school, what you have. And there you find, day and night, O Lord, we shall meditate upon thy word. These are the ones who will be blessed in the sight of Lord God. But how many people are really blessed in such way? Meditate. You are not even able to carry a cross for two hours, 40 minutes of your life. Every day to be given to the Lord God. You rob that time from the Lord. And how would you be a chaste worship to Christ tomorrow, dear brethren? You consider the words of my Lord God to be very. You don't have delight. You don't have that great relaxation of deliverance from the mind of Christ. You know, he says, but for them I have saved. It is not your greatness, dear brethren, you think. You are pure, you are loyal, you are this, you are that, you are X, Y, Z. <laughs> it is his grace that is great for all the benefits what he has given what the things pertaining to his grace we are using our time if it were not for the glory of Lord God the Father if this life is not for well preparation to be for the resurrection body to be received in Christ 
If it is not making this body to be a chaste holy virgin to Christ. And not that you will be ending up like the way to refuse of marriage. As the people who find over here on the face of the earth in Roman Catholicism. They say we will not marry but they have been buried the skulls. When they excavate some of the churches through the spinsters having illegal relationships and producing the children. And what do they do now? They bury in the same church. They find skulls of the skirts. But outward they would say, will not marry. And they say, because we are chaste virgins to the Lord. <laughs> Everything will be, bought in, will, be, will be bought into the light at the judgment seat. Be careful. Your every motive, your every intention of your thought. As we find in Acts chapter 16 in verse number 41 and 42. Or 38 and 39. The soldiers will come back and tell that these were Roman citizens. That's the word we find over there. Rima. Not Logas. You know the soldiers who come back and tell. The same thing if the pastor teacher will come back and tell the Rimata declaration of Bible doctrine, then these people will come to know that you are the citizens of heavenly realm, not the citizens of this earth. Therefore, you have to produce your body to be like a chaste virgin to Christ. Being as opposed to one husband, do you not understand the relationship? Not like the way like these fathers in the Roman Catholicism or the spinisters in the Roman Catholicism forbidding to marry but practicing all illegal means to clear the lust of the flesh. Even the Bible says, Says a widow if she is under the age of 60 to get married because you can't find women like Anna who went along after seven years of marriage to be in the temple of the Lord God you can't find such women to the Lord such will be the great ones you're claiming to be widow but she has been already living to her pleasure of vanitonness says the Bible so better for her to get married because you know very well what the Bible says, it's for true. Though yet you are living such kind of a life, God the Father is coming up with grace to save you. As we read that in Second Kings chapter 14. The sins which he, Jeroboam introduced, the low class caliber of the men or the priests who were there to destroy the teachings of the word of Lord God. He comes up to teach them with the right truth now. And then he says, for all the things I should blot out the names of Israelites from the heaven, but yet I have saved you. The word save is nothing but to renovate the standards of your thinking and fix your eyes upon Lord God. That's the word save. Yasha. And that dear brethren, in, in Isaiah chapter 43, in verse 22, what you're able to make, you're able to make the calling of my Lord God to be a very burdensome for you. Carrying your cross every day and following my Christ, though the Bible says preach the word of Lord God every day, it counts for you to be a very burdensome. And now what does he say? You have not bought me the cattle of the burnt offerings. Neither you have honored me with the sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wear it thee with incense. You have bought me no sweet cane with money. Neither you have filled me with the fat of the sacrifices. But you have made me to serve with thy sins, which you have wearied with me with thine iniquities. You know, what does he say? Do you not think the people started the sacrifices for them? Do you not think, Lord, I'm not getting my sacrifices and offerings. Have I not been giving you my first fruit so that you can heave that before thee, before the priest heaved before thee? Do you not think, Lord, I have not bought, bought the sacrifices? The word over here, when he says, you have not bought me, that means you have not made your life to be a living sacrifice to Christ, renovating your life to become like a grammatia, joined as disciple in the Lord. He doesn't want your multitudes of sacrifices. He wants you to obey the word of Lord God. That's what you failed. And people may think, how could God say that we haven't bought the sacrifices? And that's what the people would love to interpret the word. But here it is not about the sacrifices of your bull or your firstborn. It is a sacrifice of you, your own life to grow up into grammatias in taking up the yoke of the burden of Lord God upon your shoulders and becoming disciples growing up into grammatias. And then he said, you have not bought me the sweet cane with money. That meant to say the cost of discipleship. 
The cost is to put to death all the lustful patterns of your all sin nature. The cost of your discipleship. Neither you have filled me with the fat of the sacrifices. Where is your burnt offerings to the Lord God in the sense of making your life to be laid down for the glory of God, burning out your fat? to give a sweet smell sacrifice kneel down and do the will of God the father you will understand what is that burning of the fat but you have made me to serve with thy sins rather than serving Christ with holiness you are making him to serve you for your sins in the realm for your own destruction because he cannot compromise. When Israel was the chosen people out of all the men we look in Amos, he says in Second Kings, I would have removed their name from under the heaven if it were not that I shown grace for them to be saved. So you have been served for your sins. You are wearied with your iniquities. And then he said, I, it is I who have blotted out the transgression for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare you that you may be justified. And you know what does he say in verse 27? Your first father hath sinned and your teachers have transgressed against me. That means if your parents are not training you up in the way that they have to go, then the pastor teacher at least has a responsibility to train you up in the word of God. But if the pastor teacher has also been failed, then you will be ending up to be as to be served for your sins before the Lord. Therefore I profaned the princes, the category of Sar, who should be the high category, what we read to overcome the pressure of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to be the curse. The word curse over here, karem, meant to say utter destruction, devoted to destruction, because the wall of fortification is not in Christ, the thinking is not in Christ, the blood did not talk about the things pertaining to Christ, therefore they have been our curse, not the curse what we read in Jeremiah, like human excreta, the curse over here to be the capture, wherewith they have been their thinking is gone, the wall of fortification is gone, the details pertaining to the word of Lord God has been gone. And Israel he gave to reproach. The word reproach over here meant to say gedup. Gedup meant to say for reveling words. Why? Because they have failed to erect a structure as per to get every thought into captivity for Christ and to open up their mouth as to be the word of God as a right season or in the right way to answer them who are in weary to get the Lord's answer and get corrected. But these people that have been given for curse, these people that have been taken for reproach. But that meant to say they will be as a blasphemous one on the face of the earth. They should be the glorious, holiest one, but they became blasphemous one. That will be the fate for you and each and every Christian believer if he doesn't become as a chaste virgin to give up his time every day to carry the cross and do the works of the Lord. The same fate what he concludes over here. He wanted you to give your life as a living sacrifice. He wanted you to give Give the sweet cane from the money, the cost of discipleship. He wants to make your lives to be worthy to the praise of his glory, but you are robbing from him. And you have been thinking that Lord God could be for me, I could be for Lord God as a chaste virgin by not carrying your cross because you're thinking carrying your cross, coming to church and learning the word of Lord God every day is a burdensome toil for you. So don't worry. He counts you to be the curse. Because your wall of fortification is not in accord with the word of Lord God. He calls you to be the reproach. Because you will be used as a reviling by others. The people when they passed on by the place of Jerusalem and he said in the book of Lamentations, they nod their head and they think and they hiss and they say, because these people, they haven't obeyed the voice of Lord God. These people, they haven't done the will of Lord God. Therefore, they became such kind of a nations. They became such kind of a great trap. You know how simple the logic is? The nations will come and look. But now we the nations called to be in Christ, to be getting married for a church virgin to the Lord. If we also don't go back and pay the price of carrying our cross and following my Christ every day, even it will be counted in such life. And how many days more, dear brethren, you want to live on the face of the earth in such a category of life, having to be rejected by the Lord. No worth to live your life being rejected by the Lord. No worth from the day you're born again till the day you die and wait for the resurrection of resurrection bodies of Christ till the day if you're not proving your integrity. That's what we have been said. 
being born again to Christ, we are dead to the world. We cannot have anything else on this life to live to the world. So dear brethren, do not spend your time to be as if in the past dispensation like the princes, the Saad, the Nasi'im or the Nadi'ib. But in the church age you have the work to be the great and unique disciples of the word of Lord God, conforming to the image of Christ. Our calling is something great. Our life is something great as compared to the Old Testament believers. Do not spend your time in vain glory on the face of the earth for the vain details of this life. But rather spend your time to become that which is demanded by the Bible. Because Lord our God would marry the chaste virgin. He would come for the chaste virgin. He will not come for the widow. He will not come for the prostitute. He will not come for the fornicator. He will not come for the woman like Samaritan. Having five husbands. He will come only for the one woman who is going to be a chaste virgin unto Christ. And all the categories of adultery, prostitution or uh, of, of fornication or whatsoever it is, like the Samaritan woman, it's been used metaphorically to teach to you that you shall let go such sinful life and become holy as one chaste virgin being exposed to Christ. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. At the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. If accounting the demands and the commandments of the word of Lord God to be wary, we have a pity upon you because you are indirectly rejecting your heavenly life. You have been there in the realm to blot out your name from the book of life. Dear brethren, make up your number one priority to carry your cross every day. Follow my Christ. Give up your time. To give two hours, 40 minutes in the day of your life every day, every day. That's the tithe of the time which you pay back to Christ, not the tithe of your income as the people foolishly, arrogantly, ignorantly, they talk and they ask in the New Testament of the church age. It is not the mentioning of tithe. It is the tithe of your time we should give to Lord God so that you could be like a chaste virgin unto Christ. Minimum seven times you ought to read the Bible, seven times you ought to write the Bible. And if you don't do that, you cannot meet the Lord God in the Holy Convocation. If you don't ascend the seven steps, you will not look the glory of God. And at how many days more you want to die sin unto death? Or speeding up your life to die? <laughs> By rejecting the word of Lord God every day, you think. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory. In His matchless, marvelous, infinite grace. So with our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to to Lord God, the Father, with the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth first for very simple, believing in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond to my witnesses with which you have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature. The entire angelic coast will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, glorious grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, if it were not by the shun of grace, O Lord, which have bestowed upon us to understand the Kesed, we wouldn't have realized, O Lord, that by being a prodigal son, never the value of the forgiving Father. Yet, O Lord, you have come up with the grace to teach us the lesson that you have delivered us to the standards of your purpose of life by showing forth grace which we don't deserve at all 
Let our Lord be men are dying out not to make ourselves to be church virgin unto thee. Help us, O Lord, to prepare ourselves to read at least seven times the Bible and to write seven times the Bible and to make up to meet in the holy convocation to understand the great depths and the great truths of the word in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we command everything into the mighty hands, O Lord, and we make our lives to be renovated according to the standards of your thinking so that, Lord, in nothing we claim our priority or our success. We have only one thing, O Lord, to give every everything unto thee, the glory, the praise, the honor, when we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. To this extent, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.